In the last few videos, we've been discussing the origins and lives of the Armenian people, specifically in the kingdom of Urardu. In this video, I want to experiment a little and jump forward in time to one of the rare occasions when Armenia met the Roman Empire in battle. In the 1st century BC, the Kingdom of Armenia had enjoyed great expansion under Tigranes the Great. To the north were his allies, the Kingdom of Pontus. Tigranes was even married to the daughter of the Pontic king, Mithridates, to solidify this alliance. During this period, Roman armies, led by Lucullus, were making progress against Mithridates, forcing him to flee and take refuge in Armenia in 71 BC. Lucullus sent an ultimatum demanding that Tigranes surrender his father-in-law or face war with Rome. Mithridates, having experienced war with Rome, advised Tigranes to avoid open battle with them, but in classic fashion of Armenian stubbornness, Tigranes met his advice. Apparently, Tigranes was unimpressed by the Roman army. Still, Lucullus' attack took him by surprise. Tigranes dispatched some cavalry to try and slow down the Roman advance. The cavalry charged the Romans while they were setting up camp, but they were repelled by the Roman sentry forces. Following this, Tigranes withdrew north to gather a larger army. Roman forces were able to disrupt some detachments coming to Tigranes' aid and even engaged with the king's forces at one point, but ultimately Lucullus chose not to pursue Tigranes and instead proceeded to Tigranagerta to put it under siege. Tigranagerta was the capital of the Armenian kingdom, founded by Tigranes himself. Who could have guessed? To create the city, he had forced many people out of their homes, including from his conquered cities, to make up the population. Therefore, the city had a multicultural population of Arabs, Greeks and Jews. In fact, the city was still unfinished when Lucullus put it under siege in 69 BC. But according to Greek sources, the city had high thick walls to provide a formidable defense against a prolonged siege. At first, the Roman siege engines were successfully repelled by the defenders with the use of flammable liquids. However, since Tigranes had forcibly moved the people to his city, the population was not very loyal to the king. So when Tigranes returned with a large army and appeared over the hills, the inhabitants standing on the tall walls pointed and shouted to the Romans below, informing them of the Armenian approach. Let's talk numbers. The Roman forces comprised of 12,000 seasoned legionnaires and 4,000 cavalry, plus several thousand infantry and cavalry from allied regions. Tigranes' army on the other hand numbered over 80,000, including several thousand cataphracts, which are heavily armored cavalry. The sizes of both armies vary wildly depending on which scholar you refer, but no matter which way you look at it, Tigranes had the clear numerical advantage. On the 6th of October, the two sides finally met. The battle started with the armies separated by a river. On the east side of the river, the Armenian cavalry had three sections, with Tigranes himself leading the heavy cavalry in the center, while the rest of the army stood in front of a hill. On the west side, the Romans deployed their infantry in a single line to appear as wide as possible, a tactic commonly used to counter cavalry. Lucullus realized that the biggest threat to his side were the Armenian heavy cavalry, so he ordered a diversionary attack which caused Tigranes to chase down with his cataphracts. Lucullus then ordered two cohorts to cross the river with the objective of circling the hill and attacking the Armenians from their vulnerable flank. Lucullus personally led the charge and when he reached the top of the hill, he yelled, the day is ours my fellow soldiers, and instructed his soldiers to attack the Armenian horses' legs, the only part that were not armored. This tactic proved effective as the cavalry quickly broke rank and in their attempt to flee hit their own tightly packed infantry, which was made up of many non-Armenians who also quickly broke as confusion spread in the army. Tigranes along with Mithridates managed to flee. He was headed north towards his hereditary capital, Ardashat. At the end of the battle, Tigranes had lost somewhere between 10,000 to most of his army, with very little or no losses on the Roman side. 
These numbers are disputed, so once again, please take them with a very large grain of salt. Remember that history is written by the victor, and the Romans especially like to give an impression of moral superiority and that they didn't fight unjust wars. Still, I think this battle is a great example of how big of a role morale and discipline could play in war. Following the battle, with no army left to defend the city, the Romans began looting Tigranagerta, eventually burning it, dismantling it and allowing the populace to return to their original homes. Despite the heavy losses, the battle did not end the war. The two men would meet again a year later, at the Battle of Ardashad, but we shall discuss that in another video, so make sure to subscribe.